How's it going YouTube? We are back with another list video. This time we are doing the top 10 shortstops in 2021. Um, this list is um, another pretty tough one here. Uh, shortstop being a pretty deep position this season. Um, they started off with, they being the MLB, Tim Anderson, Javi Baez, Bo Bichette, Carlos Correa, Corey Seager, Trey Turner, Francisco Lindor, Xander Bogarts, Fernando Tatis Jr., and Trevor Sto Story. Excuse me. Um, I think it's fairly decent. Uh, there's a couple of guys that I don't see the reason why they're so low. Um, a couple of guys that I don't see the reason why they're so high. So let's start with a very, very subtle change here. Solely because of the fact that Tim Anderson is a better hitter. Um, Baez obviously has that spectacular defense that everybody hypes up, and Tim Anderson's defense is not as good. But um, Tim Anderson also doesn't strike out as much, and he also tends to hit 330. Um, potential is there for him to move up in the list, but it's just that top five and top six, top seven right here is it's very, very, very nasty at the moment. So um, the potential is there, but he just needs to tighten up his defense a little bit, and um, and I think he'll have a, a good chance of cracking that top five. That being Tim Anderson, I was total, totally talking about Tim Anderson right there. <laughs> As you can tell, it's been a long day for me. But um, Baez is number 10 because I think he's a little bit overrated. Obviously, defense is great, but um, strikes out too much. And um, I just don't see the hype when it comes to Javier Baez. Um, that's why he's number 10. I explained before why Anderson is number 9, number 8 very very accurately placed in my opinion Bo Bichette I think we are hyping him up a little bit too much but um the flashes of greatness are there man he's got he's got the flow the hair he's got the um the sweet short compact swing hits for power hits for contact gap to gap um doesn't really matter kid's gonna be a stud he stays healthy he's a stud and now this is where Things get interesting for me. Xander Bogarts. So MLB has him ranked number three, and I wonder why. I don't know why. Um, he's a good hitter. Defense is not great. Uh, is he? Can he out hit some of the other guys on this list? Probably not. Uh, can he outfield a lot of the other guys on this list? Probably not. Um, do I think he's better than Bo, Tim, and Javier? Yeah, if I was gonna, but if I was gonna build a franchise with one of those four, I'm taking Bo. One hundred percent. I just don't think that um that Bo is quite better than Xander yet. Very very subtle things um, that can be improved between those two, and I think they're both um, good players. And I think Xander's a great shortstop. It's just that when you're getting to like the here and down, it's there's like little things here and there that separate them that make the best the best. And for me, number six, and this is gonna hurt a lot of people's feelings. Fernando Tatis Jr. Don't care what anyone says. He's not a top five shortstop yet. Nope. No, sir. Um, strikes out probably about 45% of the time. He's fun to watch. He's very entertaining, and I love his game. I love what he's doing for the game of baseball. But he is not at that level yet. I mean, he finished the season at 270. A 270 batting average. And though that is an above average season when it comes to um, league average, when you look at what Trevor Story's been doing at a consistent basis, even Bogarts has been hitting Lindor. Lindor had a down season last year, but before the um, the bubble season, Lindor is obviously probably the best shortstop if you look at it. Uh, Trey Turner, what Trey Turner's been doing. Corey Seager when he's been healthy. Correa even last season. So it's just we're so up here on Tatis about – Oh, the flashy plays, tagging up on, on an infield fly, the stuff like that, the 3-0 and daddy hat grand slams. Those are cool. Those are great. But we need consistency. 
because he disappeared that last like 30 game stretch he was gone playoffs gone nowhere to be found um consistency and health he has not played 100 games yet in his career his rookie season he played 80 last year obviously it was a 60 game season i believe he played 50 something so um the potential is there to be the number one shortstop it's totally there it's not that it's not there and that's not why i'm putting him up there it's just that we haven't seen number one shortstop yet not yet it's there but not yet which brings us to this um this guy right here um where do i want to go where do i want to go carlos correa um well he was consistent i mean he he hit he hit, he hit, he hit, and he hit, and he hit, and he hit, and he hit. Playoffs, regular season, he hit. He was good, really good. Um, attitude could use a touch up, <laughs> but that doesn't that doesn't account for uh, your actual baseball talent. So, um, yeah, he's a, I, in my opinion, he's a top five shortstop. He um, he really didn't put him in put himself in a position to not be in that top five. He hit the ball really well. He performed all year long, consistent. He performed in the playoffs. One of the reasons why they were one game away from a World Series, from going to the World Series at least. One reason why they were that close. So he earns himself a top five spot. This is going to be Trey. Hold on, this marker is dying on me. Give me one second while I switch this marker. Good thing I have another black one right here. Trey Turner. One of my favorite players to watch in the league is Trey Turner. Um, play multiple positions. You can see him in the outfield every once in a while. Um, extremely, extremely, extremely fast. Great contact. And um, his power is a little sneaky too. Um, he'll put a couple out on you if you're not uh, careful where you locate your fastballs. Um, deadly as soon as he's on base. And he, um, not an easy out, to say the least, either. Uh, defensively, arm's not that great, but glove is good enough to, to compensate for the arm. Um, I really don't see a flaw in his game. He walks a lot, good leadoff shortstop, good contact, decent power, good fielding. He, um, he solidifies himself as, um, as a top five shortstop with those little intangibles, especially his speed. His speed is probably the reason why he breaks my uh, top four, even. But he's not quite top three because starting our top three, Francisco Lindor. And I think we are forgetting just how good Francisco Lindor is. Um, the guys like Tatis and Bo and all the young guys are... Or, um, you know, they're they're in the forefront more often because they're young and they're they're swaggy. The door got some swag and he has some talent. Switch hitter, good power, great fielding. You know what I mean? There's not too uh, many holes in his game either. And um, you tend to get a lot of players like that when it comes to a top 10 list because you're, you're talking about the elite of the elite. And right now, he's number three. Last year, probably... Would have been number one but number two who is mlb's number one trevor story i love trevor story great great player um especially since he improved his defense uh, he went from being a very average defensive shortstop to being one of the best and up for a gold glove didn't win it but he ended up he was a uh, top three in the nominations along with javi baez and nick ahmed who ultimately won the gold glove um Great power, crushes left-handed pitching, obliterates left-handed pitching. Um, could be interesting to see where Trevor Story gets moved. And that brings us to number one, which uh, most people will say is biased, Corey Seager. The fact that MLB put him number six after the season that this guy just had uh, is um, astonishing to me. Probably, I don't remember where he finished in MVP votes. It wasn't top three, but it should have been at least top five. Um... The guy hit all year. Uh, his slumps, he would go like 0 for 9, and then all of a sudden go like 4 for 4 or something like that. Something crazy. 
Um, he's showing an amazing amount of power in spring training. I know it's the spring, it doesn't matter, but in the World Series, he hit bombs. In the entirety of the playoffs, he hit bombs. He was, um, I think he and a Rosarena were going for the record for most home runs in a World Series. So if he hits that, that power, if he gets that grown man strength, he's 25 right now, I believe. And he's hitting bombs at an immaculate rate. He could go for 40. I would not be surprised to see him go for 40. I don't see it. I see him more like as a 25 home run guy, but he's going to hit you 310, 320. You know what I mean? Not going to steal very many bases. He's not very fast. He's um, His defensive abilities are are um, interesting to me because he'll make the easy plays look easy and then make like the above average plays look easy as well. So you're not going to see a lot of highlights of him because he will set his feet when he makes a nice backhand in the hole and fire it across the diamond, whereas to some of the other guys will do a jump throw or throw on the run. Um, Seager will make the play, just not as flashy. So I feel like his defense gets a little bit outshined by the fact that he's very, very fundamental. Um, sweet swing, uses all parts of the field, power, contact, you name it, he does it. World Series MVP, and in my opinion, that makes him the best shortstop in the league right now. And that's going to do it for this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe, comment who is your number one shortstop and the reason why, and I'll see you guys next time.